dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Killing Zoe. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is the 7th and we're taking a look at the movie Killing Zoe. That's right, this movie came out in 1994 and it was uh, di director Roger Avery's directorial debut. That was kind of hard to say because my brain was kind of blunt. What was that? His little thing that he did and kind of this weird surreal moment. Yeah, 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 okay. I, got, I don't know should why. should be flame coming out of my hands. But, but you snapped in my face, so I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so yes, it's his directorial debut. He also did uh, The Rules of Attraction later on. Uh, and the plot is fairly simple. It's and, and, and actually the, uh, the the title is misleading. I don't think it should be called Killing Zoe because that's only like maybe 10 minutes at the very end where it becomes an issue. Um, it really should have been called... Uh, it's just a catchy name. Two, it really is. Two Nights in Paris, I think, would have been a better name. But basically, yeah. no? Two Nights in Paris. Two it Nights sounds in like Paris. a romance. You're right. I guess it does sound romantic. But anyway, anyway, Eric Stoltz. Yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna get into plot, plot first. So let's talk about plot. Eric Stoltz. <laughs> the plot is Eric Stoltz, who, who plays that, <laughs> goes uh, goes from America to Paris because his friend invites him, uh, and basically he's a safe cracker. He's a professional safe cracker. He goes in and he he opens up safes so that people can go in and steal money, and he joins this ragtag tag team. And then he has a night out on the town, and the next day he does the job, and then things happen. So that's pretty much the entire gist of it, without giving anything away. Uh, and Eric Stoltz is in it, if you haven't guessed. Uh, so why don't you just go ahead and take it away? All right. Well, this is one of my favorite movies from my adolescence. I love this movie. It was right there with, you know, like Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs, and all that stuff. In fact, I like this better than Pulp Fiction. Huh. Um, it's kind of the same crew. Like, he hung around, you know, Quentin Tarantino and, and Rodriguez and Quentin all that Tarantino stuff. Quentin Tarantino actually had a finger in this. Yeah, so. he's a producer, I believe. Anyway, um, so I, I've always kind of had a fondness of this movie. So it was interesting to me. I actually owned it, you know, for a long time, but I haven't watched it for a long time. So it was interesting to me to watch it again. And notice things that I didn't notice before. They're not necessarily things about character or story or anything like that. It's really the production quality and kind of like what it's done. It really has an indie film vibe to it. Yeah. And, you know, that makes sense because it was fairly low budget and all that stuff. But I really, I, I realize now that this is the movie that I bring up, you know, a cue in my mind every time I have like a, a bank heist you know, like Payday the game, you know, and I'm playing that. This is the movie I'm thinking of. I want to mm. hear about that. This is the movie I'm thinking of. And like more than Heat and more than anything else. Like this is the movie that I remember when I'm thinking Bank Heist. See, I always think of, uh, well, I think of Ocean's Eleven, but they didn't really rob banks. Yeah, but that was so much longer after this. And yeah. I, you didn't know this movie, so no. maybe, maybe it would have had something to do with it. But anyway, I just, I really do enjoy this movie. Now, there's a lot of... You know, weirdness. I'm not huge into, you know, and drugs and sex and all that stuff. And there is definitely some of that in here. A bunch of drugs. But, yeah, a bunch of drugs. Um, they're, they're Wild Night in Paris. It's basically the friend of Eric Stoltz who's paid Jean... Uh, John, John Hughes Anglade. Okay. A very French dude. And uh, he, he's he been, you know, in America as well. He kind of did this share time with the divorced parents, you find out, kind of thing. I'm not going to spoil any more than that. But his character is kind of the driving force, right? He's He's got this kind of... He's a bastard. Like, he really is arrogant and whatever. But he's also kind of loving towards his friend. But then that kind of also changes again. So you just you learn through this character what's going on. Eric Stoltz is kind of... He plays the straight man. You know, he's kind of the, the counterpoint, I guess. He's he's the anchor. But uh, it's all about Eric. Yes. Uh, uh, you mean, yeah, okay. Not Eric Stoltz, but Eric, the character. Yeah, I'm John, sorry. John Hughes. The character, Eric. Uh, this French guy who's putting together this heist. And I do enjoy the other characters. They have very definite personalities about them. Right. And even though they're, like, you know, drugged out of their gourds, it, you do get that interplay and you understand the role of each one. And it, that comes into play later. But, like, as you said, as you hinted at or just said, it really is a small story. So there's not a really a whole lot there. Um, you get a lot of, we're, you know, the police are outside and whatever, but you never really see them, you know, kind of thing. But that's very a la, you know, Reservoir Resident, Resident Dogs and stuff like that. Like, right. all the things that are happening outside, you don't really see kind of thing. So you, you very focus on the thing. But from the first shot, it's like, this movie 
is of that genre because it's very tight and Stoltz comes into frame in a cab and it's just from there on it, it has that feeling. So he definitely, you know, uh, tapped into that. Right. It is a period piece in a way because it, it reminds me so much of the early 90s. Like that it's just quintessentially that. Yeah, very much so, yeah. Um, I enjoy pretty much everything about it. The music is a little jarring now. It's a, it makes it a little dated, but I, I enjoy that they kind of went there because they've got this kind of quirky things going on. Yeah. It's definitely like guy in a basement making music kind of thing. Very in some, true. some parts of it. Um, but then they have like a jazz scene and yada, yada. Um, the portrayals I think are done really well. There's nobody that, that takes me out of it at all. I mean, they all do a great job. The only moment that's kind of hard to swallow for some people is actually the one I referenced at the beginning because it's so out of the movie it's just this weird bizarre thing that you don't really understand what just happened and right. the character just kind of you know looks at the you know around the camera and stuff and you, but you're just trying to get his kind of madness his breaking point kind right of thing so it's understandable it's just for some people uh, it's jarring i know it, it, it was jarring to me I, I i haven't watched this movie until just now to review it um and when i saw that that scene um where he kind of flicks a cigarette and it just kind of bursts into flames and then fizzles away it just, it was jarring. It kind of took me back. But then I was like, oh, he's kind of hallucinating now. Right. So some really It was cool, weird, too. Yeah. But yeah, they did like a sound effect to it and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. Anyway, um, without giving anything away, there's there's things that you come to know about the characters that really change. And, and like at the, at the end, you don't, I, I don't know if they even intended this, but at the end, you're kind of like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. Yeah. But they don't really hint at that, so I'm not really sure that they meant to do that. But when you start putting the things together, it's like, oh crap! Yeah, his life has just changed forever because of one little thing. So you'll have to find out what that is. But I do really enjoy this movie, and when I started watching it again, I'm like, oh crap! Is this gonna be one that I loved and now I can find holes in? Not so much. I no. really did enjoy this movie. It's just a little bit dated. Yeah. But so is Pulp Fiction. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And Reservoir Dogs, even though I, I think I love Reservoir Dogs more than anything else of that genre. But anyway. Um, so I think that you should enjoy it if you enjoy those types of films. Agreed. And, and I like uh, Julie Delpy. In fact, I think I saw her recently and was like, that's the girl from Killing Zoe. Well, I mean, she was in, uh, what was she in? She was in The Three Musketeers, and she was in uh, oh, uh, American Werewolf in Paris, which if you haven't seen that, that was a great movie. Um, and I liked, I liked American Werewolf in, uh, in London, uh, which she wasn't in, but I'm going to bring up anyways. Um <laughs> But this, but American Werewolf in Paris was was really great, and I think she did a great job on that. Um, but this one, she was in, and she 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 doesn't really have a big part, and that's why I have a problem with the title, is because she's there in the beginning, she's there in the end, but everything else really doesn't have anything to do with her at all. So, and and there really is no killing Zoe. It's just I, yeah, I she's not even she's it. not even a catalyst. She right. does she does kind of uh, add weight to a decision that's made late, but that's pretty much it. So yeah. I guess I can understand that, but. I guess if you think of it from Eric Stoltz's character, that's like his experience in in France is I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I I guess it is it is kind of hard to justify, but it does sound a lot better than Two Nights in Paris. Okay, okay. <laughs> There's no roses in Killing Zoe, you know. Two Nights in Paris is like oh, 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 oh roses and champagne. Yeah. Well, there was a there was a movie that had a similar title, and I think that's where I, what I drew from, where it's just like. All out action in a short period of time, and I'm trying to remember the title, but I can't. How did you feel about the long, like, driving scene in the beginning? I, it, it was one of those tension builders, I guess, because I was expecting something, I was waiting for something, and and they do that with the music too, where it's just kind of and it's kind of like jarring because you're listening to it, but you're like, okay, they're just. Well, that I liked, but the beginning to me it reeks of. Look, we're actually shooting in Paris. Yeah, you know, kind of yeah, thing. yeah. And it's just it's kind of slow. And then at one point they get stuck behind a truck or a van. So it's like, what did they have a camera for? You know, thirty minutes and they didn't have any better footage. I I don't really understand it. And I that's when that's the moment I was like, oh crap, is this going to be one of those movies that I used to love and now it's like, Ur. I think I think it was okay. But it was because... just that weird thing. And then they do it again at the end, really shortly. Yeah, I, I think it was okay because it kind of felt like he was. I guess gaining comfort in this new place. So it, it just kind of nudges it over to indie land. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But uh, anyway, I do think it's a solid movie, and I do very much enjoy it. And there's a little bit of you know objectionable material. So if you're really sensitive, you might be like, Ugh. yeah. But uh, yeah, all of it has weight. It, none of it is like just throw away. Right. Like boobs. Hey, look. You know, it, none it of that. all has weight. So. 
All right, guys, uh, that's our two cents. Uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, watch our great playlist. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a car game, art print shirts, stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will chat with you all day. We're also blogging. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing bits about the world I've created for 10 plus years. Take a look. If you like it, share it. Support me that way. And mine is nicholasbach.tumblr.com, where I have short stories and poetry. So if you're interested in that, check that out. All right. See you later. Oh, you nearly shut me out, you bastard. Next up, it's our first look at DC's Villain Month. On today's dual review, it's a movie I forgot the name of. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Killing Zoe. Right. On today's dual review, it's Killing Zoe. I'm RJ. We did this already. Yeah, but your gun was in France. Oh, that's why you said Okay, I'm sorry. I'm smiling like a bastard because I screwed that up. I was like, we did this already. <laughs> but not good enough. On today's dual review, it's Killing Zoe. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Killing Zoe just sounds weird. Uh, she said Zoe or Zoe, so if I was all français, it would be Zoe. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. And let's do it again. Oh, yeah! Snap into a Slim Jim! Okay. Oh, yeah! I haven't had a Slim Jim in like forever. What are Slim Jims? Are you serious? Slim Jims are those metal things, right? That you pop open the door. Actually, yes. <laughs> So there you go. Well, why the hell would you ever want to snap into one of those? I don't know. I never understood the commercial. They're, they're like yeah, yeah. fake jerky. The pepperoni sticks. Yeah. Infused with energy, apparently. No, no, they're not. There's nothing special about them. I remember Except playing. Except they're probably cheaper than like O'Brien. Back on PlayStation oh, Brian. Two, uh, there was a game called I think it was Dave Mira's BMX, and one of the characters that you can unlock. Was uh was the Slim Jim guy? It was just, you know the Slim. He was an actual Slim Jim. He was dressed in yellow and he had the red head and nice. yeah. You could play it. He sucked though. He wasn't that great. <laughs> oh, he nearly shut me out. You bastard. Oh, it's okay. At least you liked killing Zoe. So I did like killing Zoe. I'll allow it. I really hate it when it's like, you hate them and then you get the point for it. Yeah. And I like them and I don't get the point for it. Sorry. Ooh. Doesn't happen often. No, it doesn't. As history has shown in the corner, wherever you put the numbers, I think it's like right here, right? Oh, dude, yeah. If people are just starting in, they're like, oh, that's a really close race. They don't know. No, I got my butt handed in there. <laughs> and at a at time, you were doing it left handed, too. Oh, well, yeah, I did the left-handed for the first, like, 50 episodes. Yeah, like, they kind of hurt a lot. Yeah, but I'm good left-handed, right? I think I am. Oh, I'm out of dice, so... We'll never know. 